Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. And this is Gizmo. We're the newcomers. We're so glad you're here with us today. You know, we get comments and questions every week from people all over the country. And we invite you to send yours in. You can send your questions to villagesnewcomers at gmail.com. And we'll do our best to get them on. In the bottom right corner, you see it over there? There's a little logo. If you click that, you'll subscribe to our channel. We really, really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Hey, we're having some great weather down here in Florida. It has been beautiful. This is the absolute best time of year for weather. It's so nice to sit outside in the evening. You mm -hmm. can do anything you like during the day. It's not too hot. And during the evening, early evening, we've gone swimming. I've done water aerobics this week. It's been just perfect weather. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun till those skeeters come out. <laughs> they do, about 7.30. <laughs> but we do love it. In fact, we went pontoon boating with some great friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, we try to make the most of this beautiful weather. It won't be long until we're cooped up inside due to the heat. Today's show. What are some must-haves when you're looking for a home? And are the town squares getting too crowded? And reports say that the Villages has just purchased another big tract of land. Mm -hmm. And where do your visitors sleep when they come? Good question. And do barking dogs <laughs> cause a problem here? All that and more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Lynn. Some upcoming entertainment. The Carpenter Tribute will be here tomorrow night, Tuesday, at the Savannah Center. That's going to be a fantastic concert. One of our viewers wrote in and mm -hmm. said, have you seen that Carpenter's yeah. Tribute? It's fantastic. No, we haven't, and we're, we don't have tickets to this no. one, but we will try to catch that mm -hmm. in the future. And please go to the squares. They are fun. I know it gets crowded, but they've got some great entertainment at the squares. Johnny Wilde and the Delights are going to be at Brownwood on Tuesday. And Blonde Ambition is going to be at Lake Sumter also on, well, this Thursday, April 6th. So come on down. Because Johnny Wilde will bring out a big crowd. Yes. Rock in the rollers. A bit, always we'll, big crowds. We'll talk about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do our sweet versus salty. Okie dokie. What do you want today? I want to do sweet. All right, you do the sweet. Okay. This is coming from Christy Moore. Hello from coastal North Carolina. You two are amazing. I watch every episode. Keep up the great job. I'm a retired kindergarten teacher after 38 years, hoping for a lifestyle visit this summer. Well, I enjoy hearing from kindergarten teachers. I know your pain, but I also know your glory. It's fun. <laughs> We thank you for watching. We uh, we enjoy putting it out for you. Yeah, we really love what we're doing now, though. Mm -hmm. But salty, we got one today from John. Given that so many of your subscribers look to both of you for guidance on how to fit into the TV lifestyle, that's the villages, by the mm -hmm. way. You ever see TV? That's the villages. Yeah. I think it would behoove you to set the bar for a more acceptable appearance than wearing two T-shirts. <laughs> It's what? usually a look used by the downtrodden and the homeless of the world. I love this design. I don't know about you guys, but I really do. And speaking of shirts, I don't have an announcement to make for you yet, but we have a new pro uh, t-shirt provider, a manufacturer. It's going to be local. Yeah. So any of you in the villages that want one of these, you're going to actually have a store that you can go to, walk in and buy them. Wow. So that'll be neat. And again, we don't have anything to do with it, but... A very kind lady said that she'd be happy to do that for us, and we're looking forward to it. I'd like to have some custom-made ones, like, you know, with a little bling-bling, glitter-glitter. We can Maybe we can work on that. And, and you, <laughs> you won't believe this at home, because if you watch our channel, by and large, you're a good person. Mm -hmm. I don't know why some of these other folks watch it if they want to send us yeah. hate mail. Yeah. I'll bet in the last two days, I've gotten at least eight really hateful emails. <gasps> and we... On a regular basis, we'll get things that say, like, wearing matching T-shirts, really? Gag me. Kill me now. <laughs> I don't mind. You know, it kind of shows we're together. And, hey, yeah. that's a good thing for me. <laughs> me or too. maybe not so much. <laughs> Remember last week when we showed you the pictures of Linda's T-shirts? 
And they had all the little holes on them. You know, one of them looked like the Big Dipper. The aliens are at. Little oh. holes. And we threw that out there. Oh, my gosh. We never had such a response <laughs> ever on a question. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of people wrote in. Was it leaning over the kitchen counter and the granite rubbing a hole? Was it a car seat belt? Was it the dryer? Uh, sharp pieces in the dryer inside the the dryer and another person said it could it was silverfish or moths <laughs> we still couldn't prove definitively what it is but we think it has to do with leaning over the kitchen counter so it's probably now don't get mad at me it's probably more of a woman's problem <laughs> it is because <laughs> majority of the women will stand by the sink and but, wash I mean, dishes you, you enjoy that yeah we enjoy it? Yeah. Well, well, you're going to get some mail now. <laughs> well, really, though. I, well, I when was the last time you changed the oil on the car? Got a point there. All right. <laughs> so, anyway, but, but there was, a, there, you know, some suggestions yeah. came in. Wear an apron. Put a towel over the countertop so that you're leaning against the towel and not mm. the sharp granite, which doesn't feel sharp no. to the finger. No. But evidently, it's. I rough guess on the we're going to bring back the aprons. Well, I think the mm -hmm. the the best answer is obvious. I mean, you don't <laughs> need to do dishes with clothes on. Just take your top uh, off you do and in the do villages. the dishes, and then put your top on when you're done. <laughs> Would you do that? Oh no! <laughs> you, he did say tuck in your shirt last night. He goes tuck in your shirt. <laughs> okay. No. All right, let's take our first question. Our first question. This is from Gary. Gary the plumber here. Did anyone in the villages have frozen water lines during the last cold snap? What do you do if it's below freezing for three to four nights in a row? Do you worry about it or it's not a big deal? I have to still convince my wife to move to the villages. Help me, please. Gary, that's a good question because it does freeze here. It froze a couple of nights. Mm-hmm devastated our landscaping out front. In fact, you're going to see a show soon where we have to replace some of them. Mm -hmm. But the piping in the homes was all fine. We didn't hear about a single incident of anybody. Well, you know, too, I don't think we had freezing uh, temperatures three or four days in a row. I think it may hit one night and then it will be, it pops right up a little bit. But uh, we did have some freezing pipes back in Indiana. I do remember having that one home we had. We had to redo the pipes in our house, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we, <laughs> we'd leave water dripping sometimes. So uh, leave the yeah. kitchen, the uh, cabinet doors right. open so it wouldn't mm -hmm. freeze. We don't mm -hmm. miss that at all. No. From Trevor, who says he's <laughs> keeping it real. <laughs> you always talk about the beautiful sky in Florida. Didn't they have sky up in Indiana? What's so special about your skies? Oh my God. We're going to let these pictures speak for themselves. It's gorgeous down mm -hmm. here. Almost every day you can look up mm -hmm. and you'll if, if you don't have beautiful white clouds, you'll have a gorgeous blue sky yes. or or beautiful uh, uh, storm clouds coming in. Yeah. They're even pretty. Yeah. This is from Tim and Candy in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We have concerns that the town squares are getting too crowded. We watch the square cam or whatever you call it, and it looks wall to wall sometimes. What do you think? It is crowded down there yeah. during snowbird season. Yes, particularly. You know, but in July and August, you can go down there and there'll be plenty of seats. Sure. Now, maybe not when Scooter's playing. 
<laughs> he's he's yeah. the line dance king. He'll yeah. have him packed. And yeah. So will Rocky and the Rollers and Johnny Wilde yeah, and, that, and Blonde well, Ambition. A lot of, yeah, big bands will have a lot of crowds. But um, I, I know that if you come early, I don't know if it's early or really late, it might be better to go to the squares. It, it's all hit and miss. You yeah. cruise that square there uh -huh. and you want to find somebody backing out. And you want to slide your golf cart right. in or your car. Right. Cars are going to be tough. Right. Those pictures you've been watching, that was from last week when Rocky and the Rollers were down there. Mm -hmm. It was an anniversary show for them, and uh, they oh, put wow. on a fantastic show. It's, I think it's my favorite band here mm -hmm. in the villages. I, I love them, yeah. too. A rental question. We talked about rentals last week. Gene and Lisa write, looking at VRBO, That's a, those are vacation rentals by owner, and Airbnbs, we noticed a lot of rental homes available for short stays. Have you heard of any problems associated with so many possible transitory visitors? Hmm. The answer to that is a big fat yes. It's a hot topic if you look at the news sources here, whether it's next door, talk of the villages, villages news. People that live here don't like short-term rentals. People parking on the streets, people that don't know when to put out the trash, mm. people that make noise, people that litter. Well, they're going in and out and in and out. They're taking advantage of the short term. They're going to the squares. They're coming back. They're going to get food. They're coming back. It puts a lot of traffic, too, on your street. It does. Mm -hmm. And now we have a renter on our street, and, and it's no problem they're at all right. for us. They do a right. good job. Mm -hmm. But folks are upset about the people that are coming for two nights or one night or three nights in and out, in and out, yeah. making the most cramming a whole vacation into that. And man, it's busy. It's noisy. Yeah, they're, they're trying to address that problem mm. and see if any legislation or restrictions can be added to limit the short-term rentals. Mm. This is from Joanne. Where does everyone sleep when company comes? My son is over six foot and needs a queen size bed or his feet are hanging off. I'm worried that that size bed won't fit in the guest room, let alone the guests. Our three kids and their spouses and one grandchild on the way. <laughs> we have the same problem. We do. When, one, when all of our clan visits, yeah. how many people do we have here? Two, four, five, seven, 12 visitors plus yeah. us, 14 living <laughs> in a three bedroom house. That's why we love our glassed-in lanai. Yes. Some of the grandkids can stay there, and they love that. It's yeah. like camping out for them, but it, yeah. it's still warm or cool yeah. and nice. Yeah, we had grandkids on the couch. We had grandkids on the floors on little mattresses. Um, Blow-up mattresses mm -hmm. are great. Yeah. We saved a big piece of foam we had one time. It was yeah. big. It was like a mattress topper. It was it? a mattress topper. We and didn't so like we it. Just, we stow it away, and when they come, <laughs> we throw it on the floor and tell them that's the bed of honor. That's you're gonna <laughs> love this one. Yeah. And they fight to see who can sleep on it. Yeah. But for a for a big guy, which is how big did she say he was? He's over six foot. But you know what? We do have a queen size bed in one of our uh, guest rooms and a double uh, a full size bed in the other one. Yeah, you can do that. So and, and who sleeps like King Tut anyway? I mean, <laughs> look straight like that. I mean, you got to curl up like a you, baby and you, you fit on all of them. Curl up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, put you on the couch. But a queen size bed will should fit. Our bedrooms are small. Yeah. Our master bedroom's great. It's a big one. It's, yeah. I think it's 18 by but 14. It's the guest rooms. Well, you can switch out rooms. No. no <laughs> Jerry goes, no, that. not for him. <laughs> All right. What? No bloopers on this one. Yeah, we've had a lot of bloopers. We didn't? <laughs> oh, yeah. We not had... as many as usual. Really? I don't think so. I think we did. I think yeah. we I'll know. I'll, I'll look when I... Yeah, you look when you type or when you edit. When you edit, you're going to find lots of bloopers. <laughs> yeah, that's a good picture. You've got your hand on my lap and it's really making me nervous right there. I'm going, what you doing there? <laughs> Proper tropical. <laughs> There's a blooper. Is that our name? We're going to say that. Take three. Just click right. There. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I think that whole topic like that really sounds bad. So, boom, you don't even need to read it. <laughs> yeah, there's this recording. No. Awesome. Sound good. Oh, okay, what are we going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool.
Ooh, it's great weather. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Someone sent us one of the original ads from back in the 1970s for Orange Blossom Garden. How Remember, fun is that? Harold Schwartz was the developer of the villages. He advertised in newspapers and sold land down here. Now, since they, they, they had legislation uh, eventually that prohibited that. Mm. But look at this ad. Beat the high cost of living. Beautifully furnished two bedrooms, 60 by 12, perma mobile home, plus a large 6,000 square foot lot. Well, I don't know who would think a 6,000 square foot lot was very big. That's the size of ours right here. Okay. It's tiny. <laughs> of course, if you have a 12 by 60 M mobile home, mobile home on mobile it, home. it's going to seem like a bigger lot because mm. you would have more. But yeah. That's not much. But the price, $12,995. And down below, there'll be some small print that says that doesn't include your carport or your driveway or a few odds and ends. But you can see that picture there. Doesn't that look nice? It looks like what people would have wanted. And yeah. people's desires and expectations have changed over the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. That would have been just great for a mm -hmm. lot of people. Yeah. Now, I don't think so many people want that small, confined living like that. So they put a house on the small, confined yeah. living lots and... And go for that. <laughs> yeah. Look at the uh, amenities that Harold offered on those first homes. Storm sewers, paved streets, mercury street lights. Are you kidding? Let's go. <laughs> Corner street posts, <laughs> garbage collection, a recreational complex, a heated swimming pool, underground telephone and electricity and TV cable, central sewage system. It sounds too good to be true. <laughs> A central water plant, private lake. Uh, we've seen that lake. It's mm -hmm. not such a big lake. Yeah, well, but that was at the beginning when things yeah. were really small. And it says it's ideally situated on in the heart of the Orange Grove and Lake section of Florida, just eight miles from Leesburg. And who wouldn't love to live eight miles from Leesburg? <laughs> but isn't that cool? I, that reminds me, when I see the print and such on that, does it remind you of the old comic book yes, ads where you does. could buy a sea monkey? You remember the sea monkeys? <laughs> no. I didn't read the comic books like How you many did. of you thought about or even bought a sea monkey? It's a sea monkey. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's like a seahorse. A sea but horse? They, they actually oh, okay. send you, I think they sent you the eggs maybe, and you, <laughs> you put them in water, and before long you had a house full of sea monkeys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, great. Jim and Valerie Perkins wrote in, and they wanted us to settle a bet. <laughs> My wife, Valerie, and I enjoy your YouTube videos. Very informative and well done. We have a bet regarding what you all did work-wise before retiring to the villages. Val thinks Jerry was a school principal and Linda a teacher or guidance counselor. Okay, so I was a principal <laughs> and you're a guidance counselor. I wish you had the money. <laughs> that the principals made. <laughs> Very close. Now, let's see what your husband said. Yeah. I say Jerry was a banker and Linda was a florist or some other small business owner. Please let us know. We have a, oh, a dinner wager online. Oh, there you go. A dinner wager. Also held as gizmo. She's, they say, eight. He's <laughs> just a little bit over 14. Remember, oh. you had a birthday here recently. <laughs> Didn't you? Okay. Drum roll. A florist. I'm a florist. Ooh. I was a teacher. I'm touching my microphone. Does that make a sound? Yeah, it will. Yeah. <laughs> I was a teacher. And I was a teacher. I came out of college looking for a job teaching history, social studies, or even uh, communications. None were available. So for the first 10 years or more I taught, I taught special education. Mm -hmm. She came out of college with a degree in elementary ed. Yes. Early, early elementary, so I liked kindergarten age and first grade. So that's what I taught, uh, mostly kindergarten, for 33 years. We both taught 33 years. Mm -hmm. I uh, also taught geography, U.S. history. I uh, even taught a little math in summer schools and uh, college near the end he of my career. He did some college bit. teaching. And we, he also coached many sports. Name all the sports you've coached. No. Yeah, it's lots of sports. <laughs> we did have a small business, though. 
Yep. We had uh, a photography business. Mm -hmm. So we would teach until 3, 3.30 for you, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah. I would go to the job site wherever we were taking photographs and set up, and we would take teams. Remember the memory mates where kids mm -hmm. are holding the football or faking the pass, and then their team photos up here? Mm -hmm. And we would do photo, you know, all kinds of products for that. Mm -hmm. So we did that for about, what, 10 or 12 years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of fun and uh, very, very tiring. I would come home and work on those yes. pictures till midnight. Yes. Had a good time. But that's our history. School teachers slash photographers slash woodworkers. Yeah, I got to be in woodworking after Slash that. bloggers. <laughs> this was from an article in the newspaper. It's been on everybody's mind here locally. So we thought we'd bring it to you. Not too much in depth. We will as the thing unfolds, but we don't know a whole lot right now. An entity related to the developer of the villages, Central Florida's 57-square-mile mega retirement community has purchased 900 acres in Lake County. So we looked it up, and it is definitely not contiguous to the villages, mm -hmm. not connected, probably at least 15 or 20 miles away. We don't know what they're going to do with that. I know the villages is good at what they do. They are good. You know. uh, how about a new villages for the millennials? What's that mean? The, the younger generation from the families, those little family communities. Oh, I see what you want to keep them over there 20 miles yeah, away. They go over there and we'll be over here. I don't know what, you know, <laughs> they may build an upscale development. Mm -hmm. It may be something more for uh, commercial. Who, you know, who knows? Who knows? But, they have a plan, and they'll tell us when we need to know, right? And they'll do well at it. This is from Dina. We are coming for our second visit in May, and we are planning to buy this year. We currently live next to neighbors that let their dogs bark nonstop. Is this allowed in the villages? Living that close together, I am hoping this is not allowed. Wow. Well, that is very uh, concerning because, no, you don't want your neighbor to have a barking dog. And most people here that I know of that have dogs are very courteous with their dogs. They take care of them. They want them. They know. I, I would not put Gizmo in a lanai that's open or screened and let him bark all day if I was gone. I think that would be horrible for neighbors. So, yeah, you know, it would be. Uh, I have heard dogs in some of the villa area when I walk Gizmo barking. That, that was you know, I heard a little yapping back here the other day. Mm -hmm. Yap, 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 yap. Yep, yep. It didn't last very long. But if it if it did, it would be really yeah. aggravating. Yeah, if somebody went to work and left their dog in the house. and. Mm -mm. But we have, like, with you know, 140,000 people live here. Yeah. There are going to be some people that think it's my property, by golly. If I want to let Fifi bark, I'll let her bark, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think they do have steps in place. You'd have to complain. Right. They would have to come out. The dog mm -hmm. would have to be barking at the time when they came out. Right. And yeah. it would be tough. It's a tough situation. Yeah. Yeah. Or the neighbor would have to maybe record it. <laughs> I think barking dogs could be a problem just about anywhere. Yeah. These homes are close together. You yeah. Know. You know that. Our, our neighbor's good neighbor. Yes. But we can actually hear them scooting their kitchen table across the floor sometimes. I, I've heard sneezes. <laughs> we can hear them sneeze. <laughs> but sometimes it's a good thing. We have a neighbor down the street here who heard somebody screaming for help who had yeah. fallen in their home right. in the middle of the night and went over and helped this woman who was down on the floor and couldn't get up. Mm -hmm. Sandy writes, what were your must-have, <laughs> I think she meant have, when you were looking for a home? Can you tell us how you prioritized what you wanted? Mm. Sandy, I think we had different things in mind. I was looking for a home that was fairly new and there wouldn't be a lot of upkeep. We mm -hmm. had lived 33 or 34 years mm -hmm. in the last home, mm -hmm. and okay. it was showing age, and things were, were being addressed all the time. You mm -hmm. know, It's a constant nickel and dime kind of process. We wanted to move into one that was ready to go, and we found it, mm -hmm. and we, we were really happy with it. Mm -hmm. But I wanted a two-and-a-half-car garage. Yes, I wanted, that was a must-have. I have. wanted a, a place for two cars and a golf cart. Now we have one car and two golf carts. Yeah, and that's that ideal. Was a, that was the thing. What else did you want? Uh, well, basically, the basics was three bedrooms and two baths. You know, we came from a home that had four baths, and uh, that was a lot of work 
to clean four bathrooms. And of course, when the kids were gone, then we had two upstairs that were just uh, alone and not being used. And that was a shame. I was so glad to have a house with just two bathrooms now. Every once in a while, I think, I wish I had another little half bath, but, um, or another master suite and then a half bath. I would kind of like that. Must haves really. I like the big living room that we have. I wanted the pantry. I wanted a place to store food. And that was important to me. When you're coming down here, just get your mind ready for the fact that all these homes are similar. Mm, if yes. you get it, what they call a designer home, that doesn't mean a fancy upscale home. It means yeah. an ordinary home. Mm -hmm. A designer home here is a built on a slab. Mm -hmm. It's not going to have much storage. It's going to have two or three bedrooms and mm -hmm. probably two or three bathrooms. Yeah. Uh, it's going to have a lanai. Some lanais are glassed in. That could be a priority. You want a lanai that's already finished. Mm. Ours is finished and has air conditioning, which is a real plus. Yeah. Uh, so you might want a bigger lot. You know, that would be the only thing that we would do different. We love our house. We love our neighborhood. We sometimes wish we didn't hear the tables screeching across the floor of the neighbor <laughs> next door. We'd like to be a little farther away. That's hard to get here in the villages unless yeah. you want to pay a real Well, if you get a corner price. lot, you're going to end up paying more for your watering, your grass cutting. So that takes in a, you know, one asking for something else is going to maybe cause another problem. I never like corner lots. Do you all like corner lots? <laughs> People that drive by on this side can see in these windows. And then when they turn the corner, they can see in your front windows. <laughs> And then you got your neighbor on the other side over there looking in your side windows, and the people behind you are looking in your back windows. <laughs> no one's ever peeking in your windows. No, no. No. <laughs> I did that for comic effect. Comic. Funny, funny. That little heart button at the bottom, that's where people have sent us super thanks. We are so grateful to Very you. Very much. Your names are scrolling at the top of the screen. We've used that this past week to buy a little bit of extra equipment. Uh, yeah. I've got an attachment for microphones so that we can have four cordless mics at the same time to do more interviews yeah. and get out and do things. Mm -hmm. And those gifts make that possible. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Two of our top viewers, Danny and Paula Blinn, bought a home in Newell. They've been communicating with us for a long time, mm -hmm. and I'm glad they finally got their dream home. Their lanai looks out at the Mickey Lee Pitch and Putt. And they are so excited to be in their new home. Camille sent us this picture a couple of years ago when she was visiting the villages. Well, she found a home in Richmond. Congratulations, Camille. Yeah. Adam and Wendy are from the Jersey Shore. He's a law enforcement officer and she's a medical professional. They say they're going to retire in five years, but since Wendy has been singing our theme song in the shower all the time... <laughs> It just might happen a little bit quicker than that. <laughs> if you want to send us a video of you singing oh, here that we theme go. song, we'll put it on. <laughs> Peter and Karen are, are from Champlain, New York. They stopped by the villages to check it out on their way to a recent cruise. This is Tori, Karen, and Biscuit. They're from Maryville, Tennessee, and they recently spent 10 days here in the villages. They say they love it and hope to meet, move here in April. Becky Kaufman says that she came here for a lifestyle visit and she hopes to live here someday. She watches the show with her grand dog, Mason, and, she's, and he says he loves Gizmo's jokes. <laughs> what a great looking pair they make. I love pictures like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to a boutique store a little while back and bumped into this lovely lady. Her name's Mary Ann, and we had a lovely time. Is it boutique or boutique? And I say boutique. 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 Potato, potato. <laughs> I guess. I don't know either. <laughs> boutique. I would say boutique. 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 What do y'all think? Boutique, boutique, boutique. I guess we could look it up. Oh. What? Never mind. What? I saw a car in the driveway. It's ours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought somebody's here. Yeah, somebody's here. It's us. <laughs> We're here. We're home. <laughs> I'm so glad to be home. <laughs> We were in Brownwood the other day, and we're we're eating at uh, Johnny Rockets. Yep. Johnny Rockets. That's a good hamburger. Yeah. And this golf cart comes by. It's really more of a dune buggy. 
Yeah. And this yeah. giant white dog was sit, was driving it, and I said, "Oh, look at that!" <laughs> he wasn't driving it. But no, I couldn't <laughs> see. That. On the other side of him was a fellow driving the cart. But and, you basically see the dog first. Right. We saw the dog. Uh huh. Beautiful. You see the pictures there. <laughs> so I ran out and actually had to chase them all the way around the square because I wanted to get a picture because this dog was awesome and it looked familiar. And now I realize after I talked to the owner, Jim, yeah, that is Oliver, but he's the brother of Xander. You've seen Xander on oh, yes. our shout outs before. Yes. A big white standard poodle. Both of them are. They are Incredible. the most beautiful dogs mm -hmm. and well-tempered. Yes. Well-mannered, well-tempered is what you say. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> well mannered. Very dog. cool dogs. Very trained. <laughs> yeah, thanks for stopping and uh, chatting with us. And, and he actually let me ride around with uh, Oliver for a little bit, so that was nice. <laughs> All right. Gives most time for you to work. Speaking of Oliver and Xander, <laughs> are you ready to uh, tell a few jokes? <laughs> Don't forget, Mason said he loves your jokes. Do you have any for us today? Hit it, Gizmo. always making paper airplanes, you know, folding the paper up and sailing it across the living room, and, and he likes to fold it and make shapes, and he told me ESPN has just announced that they are going to cover the world-famous origami competition. Unfortunately, it's on pay-per-view. <laughs> pay-per-view? Hmm? <laughs> Mom and Dad took me down to Brownwood the other night because Rocky and the Rollers were playing, and they like to listen to Rocky and the Rollers. And there was this cute little shit zoo about three seats away from me, and she said, Hey, Gizmo, you want to dance? And I said, I can't dance. And she said, Why not? I said, I got two left feet. <laughs> Hey, everybody, I'm going to close it out today with a riddle. Are you ready? What is fast, loud, and crunchy? What is fast, loud, and crunchy? Dum, 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 dum. A rocket chip. A rocket chip. Oh, well, they can't all be winners, right? But thanks to everybody that sent me jokes. You can send them to Villages Newcomers at gmail.com. I'll see you next week. That's going to do it for this week's edition of... Mailbag Monday! Be sure to tune in for Thursday's show. We're going to take a beautiful cart ride all the way up Buena Vista to that magical tunnel of trees up uh, near Spanish Springs. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to our channel and like us on Facebook. And a few weeks ago, we showed a video. We thought it was great. It was a Mailbag Monday. The title of it was Mean People in the Villages. <laughs> that show must have gone over like a lead balloon because it got hardly any views. Oh. So we're going to post a link to it right there. Check it out if you want. We think it's a good one. Until next time. See you when you get here. <laughs>